the raptors or dromaeosaurs were generally small animals, um, generally large-brained, large-eyed. They're characterized by a very large claw on the foot, which is kind of like a can opener. A very nasty looking claw, which had to be held off the ground actually because it was so recurved and sharp at the end. These are incredibly vicious little dinosaurs. They're built for speed and maneuverability, and they're armed to the teeth, literally. Although they're very small, one would be more than a match for a grown man, but a pack of these would be pure hell for most of the herbivores that shared their environment. <laughs> These raptors were small compared to most of the dinosaurs they hunted. They stood only three to four feet tall at the hips, were six feet long, and weighed less than a hundred pounds. Their smaller size meant that these dinosaurs had to be cautious when taking on bigger prey. Having a delicate skeleton almost requires that these animals, in a sense, be careful. What that means is that they must have some sort of agility that allows them to use these weapons, yet still protect themselves. What's interesting is that we can now, with this new CT technology, look inside their skulls for evidence of that agility, and we find it. When we look at the inner ear, what we see is long, delicate canals that suggest that these animals were relatively quick moving, had good high hand coordination, and likewise, were generally agile animals. When these predators jumped in to inflict damage, they relied on two basic weapons to take down their prey. The first weapon was their teeth. Dromaeosaurus was one of the nastiest dinosaurs that was around. They had a, a rather sh very, very, very sharp row of teeth, very, very blade-like. They were used in kind of a cookie cutter action, if you will. Recurved teeth helps them to slice through the meat. So they, they bite onto something and the teeth tear into it. And they've got these little serrations down the front and the back that tear through the muscle fibers. The recurved part means as the skull pulls back, it carves into the flesh and helps tear out a nice chunk. So it helps them slice through the meat much more effectively. Sharp, serrated, and recurved their teeth were capable of causing some serious damage. But the most powerful weapon in their arsenal was their claws. Basically, I think that uh, raptors relied very heavily on their hands and their feet uh, for killing. And you can see that in the case of a raptor, you have claws that are in fact bigger than its own teeth. That's telling you something right there. Whereas in the case of, uh, say, Tyrannosaurus rex, if you look at the teeth of Tyrannosaurus rex, they're as large as or larger than the claws. Um, so again, there's a reversal there, and it's telling you that, okay, Tyrannosaurs are using their mouth to kill. Dromaeosaurs are probably using their hands and feet more than anything else. To compensate for their smaller size, these raptors may have hunted in packs this would allow them to take on much larger prey. Hunting in packs serves a very important purpose when you're smaller than the prey that you're around. Why spend your day chasing bugs and small rodents when you can take down something much larger? We see this behavior in numerous modern predators like lions, wolves, hyenas, and even crocodiles to a certain extent. When we look at dromaeosaurs, what we see is an expanded cerebrum. Did that expanded cerebrum allow them to hunt in packs? We can't say that. What we can suggest, however, is that they might have had the cognitive capabilities to actually deal with complex situations, potentially to solve problems. Compared to other predatory dinosaurs, they certainly were starting out with a better sort of brain power that potentially could have made that kind of capability possible. Raptors could even communicate with each other verbally, like modern birds. When I looked at the bite marks on the Admonosaurus tail, I could see that they were not very deep and they were relatively small. 
That suggests to me that whatever bit this dinosaur did not have the jaw strength or long teeth necessary to really bite deep into the hive. And then the discovery of the raptor teeth found nearby clinched it for me. I believe the most likely candidate for whoever left those small bite marks on that tail was Dromaeosaurus. But was there other evidence to support the notion that raptors preyed upon the duckbill? Other dinosaur remains found at a second site in South Dakota would prove they did. We actually have a site where we found Dromaeosaurus bones with Edmontosaurus, and, and that's the Ruth Mason Quarry, where we've got a bone bed of several thousand individuals of Edmontosaurus, and every once in a while, we'd find a bone or two of Dromaeosaurus in there. So they were not only contemporaries, but obviously these Dromaeosaurus were out there eating on these Edmontosaurus. But why would only the teeth of a raptor be found near the tail? When predatory dinosaurs like Dromaeosaurus feed, it's not unusual for them to break off a tooth. In fact, their teeth are actually made to break off and be replaced by the tooth growing underneath it. This is a great way to ensure that they always have a sharp set. Unless the Dromaeosaurus is killed in the process of eating his meal, the only evidence you're going to find that they were even there are these broken and shed teeth. But the question still remained. Would a pack of raptors be willing or able to take on a dinosaur 10 times their own size? Would a Dromaeosaurus go after an Edmontosaurus? Well, a single Dromaeosaurus, no way. That'd be suicide for that Dromaeosaurus. It would get crushed. But if there were a situation where a pack of Dromaeosaurus could come at the sides of the Edmontosaurus, the Edmontosaurus is not an armored dinosaur. It's not protected on its sides. The Dromaeosaurus can go after them. And once it starts getting weak, it's going to collapse, and they can finally go after the real killing spot, the throat. Once that throat's really exposed where they can get to it, they can bite in there, they can slash, and that duckbill, it's got no more chance at that point. With deadly claws, a mouthful of meat-slicing teeth, and strength in numbers, science began to paint a picture of a battle between a large plant eater and a pack of raptors. But investigators were about to make another discovery, evidence of a third dinosaur. It was the king of the prehistoric kingdom. And it would change everything experts thought they knew about what happened here.